Hey YouTube, I've been getting a lot of questions on stream regarding relics, so here's the promised video. But first things first, this video does not go into detail all the effects of each relic. For that, you can just go into the game and read for yourself instead, or you can watch the plethora of other relic videos out there that will read it for you. I'm here to show you the ones that really matter in the meta and save you from potential pitfalls. First off, let's roll this comparison footage between relics and no relics. Just know that this was recorded before I maxed out the spear, so it is at zero stars, and we are using free-to-play alternative matrices on Nemesis. As you can see, relics are very important when trying to do damage, so let's do a breakdown on the relics used and how they stack with some quick maths. Here are all the relics that provide an active damage boost. Going from the left to right, we have the hologram projector, starting with doing 35% damage and going up to 50% at 5, regionally balanced from the 100% at 5 from the CN version, the space-time rift at 3, boosting 20%, the drone at 3, boosting 5% every 5 seconds for a total of 25% maximum during the last 5 seconds. The Omnium Shield at 5, boosting 25% for 7 seconds every time you pass through it for a maximum of 27 seconds of theoretical uptime every minute. And finally, we got the SR Relic Kant at 2, providing a 10 second 20% damage increase every 30 seconds. This is also regionally balanced compared to the CN version where it has an 80% maximum increase if you have less than 20% HP. And since damage boosts are multiplicatively calculated in this game, this comes out to a total theoretical damage increase of over 3.3 times your original damage, or almost 7 times for the CN version from the relics alone. But wait, we can only use 2 relics at once. Why are you multiplying all 5 damage boosts together you ask? Well, if you paid attention to the first clip, or saw me deleting bosses on stream, or if you watched my clearing bygone floor 600 videos, you can see that relics can be used and swapped out before getting into combat. So let's roll a slow down comparison clip to prove that my damage is indeed multiplied correctly. Oh, and if you're wondering, I didn't forget about the strange cube. It does provide 10% damage increase for 10 seconds at 1 star, but the trash tier Long ass animation makes it completely unusable. So here's the general rotation of relics that you want to do pre-combat. You start off with the drone, since it takes a while to build up to maximum damage. Then you run in with the space-time rift hologram combo, since only hologram has a cast animation. You press 3 and then 2 pretty much at the same time. Then you swap into your final two relics, Kant and the shield, since they have the shortest cooldown to be your permanent relics for the rest of the fight. Let's pause the clip and do some quick maths. Going from left to right, we have the Kant V2 buff giving me 60% damage increase since I have full HP. Then we got the 25% shield buff. Then we got the hologram that's doing 75% of my damage since I don't have it at 5 stars yet. Next buff is Samir's trait, which we ignore since we also got it on the right side. And finally we got 4 stacks of the drone coming up to 20% increase. Also, the 20% from the space time rift doesn't show on our buff bar because it is a debuff on the boss instead. This comes out to a total of about 2.88 times our normal damage, ignoring the hologram. Since it is a separate damage tick, we multiply the number on the right by this to get about 65,000, which comes close to the 62,000 on the left considering our 10% variance in damage. The second number, which is damage dealt by the hologram, is basically also just 75% of the first number, with a bit of variance as well. Now that we know these relics are good, which one should I invest in first? To answer this question, we gotta do some more math and theory crafting using Bygone Phantasm. Here, I made a diagram of the Bygone 2 minute and 30 second timeline, and put in the relics with their buff amount, duration, and cooldown all to scale to give you guys a visual guide to these relics. The length is the buff duration, the height is the buff amount, and the gaps in between are the relics respective cooldowns. Going by the diagram, we come up with the following data, assuming our character does 1 damage per second when not under the influence of any buffs. Let's just explain the first one to help you all understand what all these numbers mean and you can pause the video for the rest. If we activate Kant at the beginning, it'll pop 5 seconds later and provide us with a 20% damage increase for the next 10 seconds, which means we are now doing 1.2 damage per second for 10 seconds. 
This can happen 5 times in a 2 minute 30 or 150 second bygone run, so we multiply by 5. Then we add the rest of the unbuffed damage that we dealt during the run, which is 100 at 1 DPS. This comes out to a total of 160 damage, which is 6.66% more than 150 damage without buffs. The rest of the relics are pretty self-explanatory, it's just that the hologram projector has a different duration, cooldown and damage as you level it up, and that's what the 0, 1, 2, and 5 mean. From these calculations, we can see that the Omnium Shield and Hologram Projector are your best relics to go for. But is this really the case, considering we are able to use all of them at the beginning prior to getting into combat like we showed earlier? To answer this new question, I bring you this diagram where I cut out the first 30 seconds, since we can do the pre-combat 6 relic shenanigans to get all the buffs to figure out which relics are really the best to keep as our active 2 during combat. From the calculations, we can see that the Omnium Shield is definitely the best choice. For the second slot, the 5 star hologram projector is slightly better than Kant, but considering the cast animation and how hard it is to control, I would definitely still take Kant over the 5 star hologram projector. Now that we know which SSR relics we want, how do we prioritize the level ups? For this, we need to know the upgrade costs of each level, and figure out how much damage we gain per SSR relic piece. From the calculations, we can get a general idea of what to prioritize, but does the numbers really make sense? If we take into account the shards we get from the runes, the shards that we get randomly through Claire's Dream Machines every week, and general team play, I would prioritize the SSR relics like this. The zeros here mean that we get them for free, once for more on exploration, and 30 more shards from the runes. So my first priority would be Space Time Rift. Why prioritize the weakest ones first? Because the Rift has other amazing properties like mob grouping, additional damage ticks, and most importantly, it also allows others to also do 20% damage which even works for non-party members in the open world since it's a debuff on the enemy. The Rift also combos really well with the Hologram Projector when doing the 6 Relic Cheese. Just make sure you take into account the shards you will get from the runes at later levels so you don't overinvest into the Rift. Next, I would go for the 5 star shield, since it also benefits the team allowing everyone to get damage increase if they know to pass through it every 7 seconds. Drone comes last, since it only really just benefits yourself, and during the time we spent maxing the shield, we should have gotten a few drone shards randomly through dream machines. Finally, we get the hologram projector stars, slowly at the end, since the cooldown decrease at 2 isn't really needed since we won't be using it as our active relic, and the additional damage at 5 isn't really that much of an improvement over the 1 star projector considering we have to spend 270 shards for it. So what about other relics? Are they useful? Well. Most other things like the Colossus Arms and Type B Armor are only useful for early game when the player doesn't really have damage themselves. You'll get them for free anyways through runes, side quests, and events, but I would never invest into them since they replace the player's attacks, resulting in a DPS loss later on. Then there's Confinement, which has no practical use for PvE, an alternate destiny that can be useful for hard to clear content, but should you really invest in survivability when you can just buff your team's damage and clear faster instead. Then there's the SR relics, where the only really good ones besides Kalant are Magnetic Storm with a potential 6700% damage multiplier at 3 stars, I'll be a very inconsistent, and Missile Barrage at 5 doing 1800% damage multiplier with about 30 or so missiles fired. These are good because they are one use and done, free additional damage with barely any interruptions, perfect for early game when the player's gear isn't fully developed yet. So my recommendation for the rest of the relics after you got all the main ones is to go for their 4 star passives that boost your damage. These passives are always active even if you don't have the relics equipped. So basically just prioritize the elemental boost for your main comp with the first row having higher priority since they also do active damage. Finally, let's talk briefly about PvP relics. In arena PvP, all your relics are maxed out to 5 stars so all their effects apply. So please go read these to figure out what's best for your 3 weapon setup. In general though, you can't go wrong with the Magnetic Pulse and Quant, as these two have very low cooldowns and allow good players to react to the ever changing PvP environment. Everything else here I have seen being used with good effect in PvP throughout the entire C and PvP metagame. Just note that the ones in the Noob Killer section should not be used at higher ranks against good players. That's it for this video, hope you all got a better understanding of what relics can do for you and your team. Let me know in the comments what you picked from the SSR and SR relic boxes, and if this video helped you in any way, you should drop a sub. I don't know what y'all are doing not subscribed yet.